We all know that guns can be used to take lives, but what we don't uh, see in the media very much is that guns can also be used to save lives. Uh, here's a headline, quote, four people are dead and two others were injured in a shooting at an Indiana mall on Sunday, authorities say. Now, this is a case where you have the media actively, well, they're reporting something, but they're also concealing something. So why did they say that four people are dead and two others were injured? Well, the actual incident is like this. We're talking about a mall in suburban Indianapolis. We're talking about a shooter who starts firing and kills three people. And then we're talking about a, someone in the mall who had a gun, legally, drew their firearm and shot the shooter dead. So that's how we get the four people dead. Now, the gunman had also injured two other people. So what's happening here is that the news headline is trying to camouflage or hide the fact that a gun is used to stop a potential mass shooter. Not that it wasn't stopped completely, the mass shooter was able to, to kill some people, but think of how many he could or would have killed if you didn't have this guy. And I, when I say guy, we're talking really about a kid. This guy was a 22-year-old fellow, Elisha Dickin. And um, when, um, when the incident first occurred, there was some media reports, he did not have a permit for the gun. Well, as it turns out, Indiana has just passed a constitutional carry law. So it was completely legal for him to, to have that gun. Now, apparently there was a sign in the mall that guns are not allowed. So he was apparently violating mall policy, ooh. But, um, but the moment that he was able to use his gun in this way, even the um, mall authorities, not to mention the Greenwood police chief, uh, praise this kid. And they said basically that he saved lives. Quote, the real hero of the day is the citizen that was lawfully carrying a firearm in that food court and was able to stop the shooter almost as soon as he began. This is the Greenwood police chief, a guy named Jim, Jim Eisen. Now, um, uh, one, of the, one of the mall authorities, the Greenwood Park Mall representatives, uh, said, we are grateful for the strong response of the first responders, including the heroic actions of the Good Samaritan who stopped the suspect. And it's his use of the phrase Good Samaritan that has sort of set off or triggered some people on the left. And they're like, <laughs> here's, here's Justin Collar on Twitter. The term Good Samaritan comes from a Bible passage of a man from Samaria who stopped on the side of the road to help a man who was injured and ignored. I cannot believe we live in a world where the term can equally apply to someone killing someone. My God. <laughs> so, and, and there were some others who echoed the same thing. Um, Here's, here's a guy named John Fugel's gang. The Good Samaritan paid for an unknown immigrant's health care out of pocket. <laughs> I, I think this has to be put down to pure comedy. Uh, the Good Samaritan did not shoot anyone. Well, this is all true, but, um, but it's, in a way, you could say that the Good Samaritan's work was, was easy. And by easy, I mean there was, the, number one, it's easy in the sense that the Good Samaritan was in no danger. The Good Samaritan shows up, the guy is already injured, he's by the side of the street, so the Good Samaritan's question is either should I help or should I not help. Number two, um, the, um, th there's no moral ambiguity in the situation at all. You've got somebody who's, who's, who's in need, you're in a position to help, and so the Good Samaritan helps. Now, if you want to make the, uh, the Good Samaritan's conundrum more interesting, ask this question, which is what would have happened if the Good Samaritan showed up earlier while the thieves were beating up the victim? Uh, so let's not even involve guns in it. Let's just say that they're, 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 they have truncheons and they're beating this guy up and the Good Samaritan shows up. What should the Good Samaritan do? Should he wait and say, listen, finish beating him up. I'm a Good Samaritan. My job's not to get involved. Uh, I'll show up later uh, after you finish beating him up and I'll administer aid. 
Or would the Good Samaritan be a real Good Samaritan if he reached into his backpack, found his own truncheon, jumped into the fray, uh, defended this guy, prevented him from being injured in this way, and also administered aid, scattered the thieves? So it seems to me that that's really what the Good Samaritan could and should do in that situation. And, and then just introducing the new element of the guns, here you've got this kid. Listen, it's easier for him not to get involved, but he decided, look, I'm going to act uh, and help um, stop this really bad guy from doing harm to others. In a way, it's even more noble. He endangered his own life is what Debbie's saying, and it's quite right. It's one thing to say the guy's about to shoot me, so I shot him, self-defense, and that's a valid enough use of a firearm. But to intervene to save other people's lives when your life is not even immediately at stake, I don't know, in this situation, maybe it was a little bit, but nevertheless, I think that this kid, Alicia Dickin, uh, is a hero, and he deserves, and this is my punchline for the segment, the Kyle Rittenhouse Award. <laughs>